Cool. All right. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. There you go. But you know, this is a time of year that people make resolutions, right? And I think a lot of the reason we make resolutions is because we do want to build for the future. We want 2017 to be better than 2016, don't we? We want some things to improve in our life. We want our life to be in a better place, a different place. We want some circumstances or situations to change. I think we want to know more, don't we? We want to experience more. I think we want to achieve more. And so we set out and we do resolutions. But here's what we know about resolutions. We don't always follow through. How many of you know good intentions are not enough? We all start off with good intentions. But somewhere along the way, there's a breakdown. And and I just wonder, thinking about this, I, I wonder sometimes if we don't really achieve our goals or we don't really experience the kind of growth or breakthrough that we're hoping for in our life, maybe it's because we're doing too much. You know, you've heard this before, but I wonder if you believe it. More is not necessarily better. There's an old adage that's very true, and it goes like this. Sometimes less is more. And I think sometimes we don't follow through on our resolutions because we're focusing on too many things, and there's a breakdown somewhere in our life. And and so I want to just talk to you very simply this morning. I, w- I want to suggest a different approach this year because I know some of you have already sat down and thought about your life and how you want things to be different. You've thought about resolutions. So, so here's my suggestion. Instead of wanting everything in your life to change at once, instead of listing all the things that you want to be different, are you with me? Instead of working on multiple things at the same time, What would happen, this is just a question, what would happen if you only focused on one thing? This year, 2017, you just focused on one thing. I don't know about you, but I can wrap my head around one. I can be a lot more intentional about one thing. And I like what they say, you've heard this before, but Rome wasn't built in a day. It didn't happen all once. Matter of fact, I like what Steve Jobs said. He, he said this, he said, be like a postage stamp. Stick to one thing until you get there. <laughs> and so here's, here's the idea, it's real simple. There's one thing that you need to do this year. There's one thing that you need to focus on this year. There's one thing that you need to deal with this year that will put your life in a better place come 2018. A year from now, if you would just focus on one thing, your life will be in a better place. Things will change. Things can be and will be different. Now, in case you're wondering what your one thing is, I have a few suggestions for you to look at and think about this morning because really I think our resolutions all revolve around these things that you're going to see here this morning. But for some of us, your one thing may be a habit. Maybe there's a habit in your life that you need to break it. Maybe it's smoking. This is the year that you kick that habit. Maybe it's drinking too much. Maybe it's you need to eat better. I don't know what habit in your life is, but this is the year that you kick that habit and that you break that habit. Are you with me? Maybe for some of you, it's this right here. It's a goal that you need to accomplish. There's like a dream God's put in your heart, and you've never taken a step toward that dream. You've just kind of put it on the shelf and left it there, but this is the year that you accomplish that goal, that you work towards that dream that God has put into your heart. For some of you, maybe it's a project that you just need to complete it. You've been too busy, you've been too distracted, you haven't had enough time, you've put it off, you've made excuses. But this is the year you finish that project. And I don't know what that project is. But this is the year that you tackle it and that you work on it. For some of us, it could be a relationship that you need to restore. God's already put it on your heart. He's already brought that person to your mind. And you need to reach out to them. 
You, you need to love them. You need to just keep showing up somebody and, and be there and try to restore that trust and with God's help, restore that relationship. For some of you, it may be the opposite. There's a relationship that you need to end. You're, you're hanging out with some people and they're not bad people. But you know in your heart, they're not going to help you get where God wants you to get. That, that God isn't, it, 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 you know, it, they're just bringing you down. You need to end that relationship. How many of you know that's easier said than done? But this is the year that you work on that and that you make that a priority. Maybe it's finances. This is the year that you retire a debt. Maybe you just have the pressure of finances hanging over your head. You don't know if you can make your payments. You don't know if you can pay your bills. But this is the year that you get your house in order. And you experience the kind of breakthrough that God wants to bring your way. I don't know what your one thing is. But I do know you already know it. And let, otherwise you wouldn't have made a resolution. You know what your one thing is. And so what we're going to do over the next couple weeks, I'm excited about this. We're going to look at Nehemiah's story in Nehemiah's life. It's in the Old Testament. Because I love Nehemiah and his example that he gives to us. He kind of shows us how we can build for the future. He, he shows us what we can do to really go after that one thing and accomplish it. And, and see it come to fruition in our life. But his story also gives us some... Kind of a wake-up call, because how many of you know doing one thing is hard? What God is going to ask you to do, and what God has called you to do, it takes work, somebody. It doesn't just fall out of the sky. You've got to put some priorities in place. You've got to do some things differently. And discouragement can set in. And the enemy can come at you and try to battle you and get you to quit. That happens so many times, and Nehemiah shows us how we can overcome that and how we can find victory in our life, somebody. So we're going to talk about this over the next couple weeks. But let me just give you a quick background on Nehemiah today. Uh, Ezra, Nehemiah picks up where the book of Ezra leaves off. So if you know about Ezra, he was a priest, and his story is the rededicating and rebuilding of the temple. Now, Nehemiah comes along and talks about how the Jews were returned back to Jerusalem, but how they were able to rebuild the walls that were broken down. In 444 BC, um, Artaxerxes was king of Persia, and Nehemiah worked for him. We, we know that Nehemiah lived in Susa, which was the capital city of the Persian Empire. And he was a cupbearer for the king, which meant that he was a wine taster. He made sure that the wine wasn't poisoned. But more than just working for the king and being a cupbearer, we know that Nehemiah was a, was a trusted friend of the king. We know that he was an official, that the king and other people in his court looked up to, to Nehemiah. We know G Nehemiah was a Jewish man, but we don't know if he had ever made a trip to Jerusalem or not. We don't know if he'd ever been there. Now, to get your timeline straight, I'm giving you a little history. Is that okay? So you can follow this story. 100 years before Nehemiah's story, the Babylonians came into Israel and destroyed Israel. They destroyed the temple. They burned it. They tore down the city walls. And King Nebuchadnezzar took some guys that you may have heard of before. Guys like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. He took these guys back to his kingdom put them in government positions, all right? And, and so that's 100 years before. Now, fast forward 100 years later, here's Nehemiah. And he has a burden on his heart because he heard a report about how the Jews were do doing. The Jews that returned back to Jerusalem, they weren't doing so good. And God kind of gripped his heart and put a call on his life. And he prays about things, and then he goes to King Artaxerxes, and he says, I want to go back to Israel. I want to help my people. They need some organization. They need some leadership. I think I can deliver that. I can do that. And we know that God's favor was upon Nehemiah because not only did Artaxerxes grant his request, but he made him mayor of Jerusalem. He gave him money and supplies. 
in, in a government escort to Jerusalem to make sure he got there safely. How many of you know that's God's favor? Now here's what you need to know about the people that were in Jerusalem though. They had never lived in the city where the walls weren't broken down and where the gates weren't burned. And some of us may think, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, we know at this time, the walls served kind of two purposes. One was to protect them from their enemies. But the other thing the walls served was, it was a sense of community. The walls brought the people together. Because the walls symbolized national pride. We can kind of equate it to the Twin Towers. When the Twin Towers fell down, our national pride kind of dropped for a while, right? Can you imagine living like that forever? That the walls were torn down, the gates were burned, there's no sense of national pride, and then there was also no sense that God was with them. They, they kind of felt like God had abandoned them, that they were just on their own, isolated, and God was just not for them. And so Nehemiah shows up. We're going to pick up his story with a couple words here in chapter 6, all right? But understand, there were some people groups living around Israel at this time. They would terrorize Israel. They would bully Israel. And so just kind of keep this in mind. But here it is, Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Ready to see this? All right, here's the verse you need to hang on to this year. Here's the verse that you need to live out this year. I love this verse. Here's what it says. Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding the wall and that no gaps remained, though we had not yet set up the doors and the gates. So Sanballat and Geshem sent a text message to me <laughs> asking me to meet them at the village Villages in the plain of Ono. Oh so here's my sarcasm. When the enemy comes at you, just say, oh no. I won't go there. All right, here we go. But I realized God gave Nehemiah wisdom and insight that they were plotting to harm me. So I replied by sending this message to them. And here it is. I am engaged in a great work. So I can't come. Why should I stop working to come and meet with you? That is a powerful verse. That, that is the, the kind of verse that if you live that out in your life, come 2018, you'll be in a different place. You'll be in a better place than you are now. Because here's my question to you. What is the wall in your world that you need to climb up on and complete the task? What has God called you to? What can't you ignore any longer? That is your work. That is your one thing. That is what God is calling you to. But here's the deal. The enemy doesn't like progress. How many of you know that? You, you make a decision that you want things to be different in your life. That you want this year to be better than last year. That, that you're going to know God better, or maybe it's your finances or your relationships, whatever it may be, the enemy's going to come at you. And he's going to try to discourage you. He's going to try to bully you. He, he's going to send lies to you. And here's the lie that he wants you to believe, that what you're doing really isn't that great of a work. That what you're doing really isn't making a difference. It's really not that big of a deal. And notice what Nehemiah had to say four different times. Matter of fact, in verse number four, I'll read it to you. But four different times, the enemy comes at Nehemiah to get him to quit the work, to get him to stop and give up. And he says this four times. They sent me the same message. Come and meet with me. Come, let's just hang out. Let's have lunch. Let's have dinner. Let's just catch up. Come and meet with me. And Nehemiah says this each time. I gave the same reply. And what was his reply? I'm doing a great work. And I cannot come down. And you know what? 
What God has called you to this year, believe it or not, is a great work. And don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Don't let the enemy deceive you or, or trick you or bully you to get you to stop. Because understand, parents, you are doing a great work. Children are a blessing from the Lord. You may go to head of, your bed at night banging your head on the wall. You may be thinking, am I making a difference? Am I really getting through to them? But scripture says when you train up your children in the way that they should go, that they will serve the Lord. You are doing a great work. Don't be distracted. Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. You could do a whole lot of different things. But right now, God has called you to be a parent. Do a great work. Do something great. How about your marriage? Guys, some of you, you could make more money this year. Some of you, you could have different opportunities this year. But you know now, God's put, put your marriage on your heart. That this is the year that you strengthen your marriage. This is the year that you spend more time together. Understand, you're doing a great work. Don't come down. They may be cute, but don't come down. You may have a great opportunity, but don't come down. They may be fun to hang out with. But don't come down. I'm doing a great work. I'm doing a great work. And you might be thinking to me, well, wh why, why are you so passionate about this? What's the big deal about this, Pastor? Well, let me tell you this. If Nehemiah would have stopped building the wall and met with Sam Ballot, they would have killed him. You do know that, right? And so what that says to me is this. There are things in our life if we do not focus on them this year, if we do not deal with them this year, they have the potential to ruin us. They have the potential to destroy our life. And here's the funny thing. You already know what they are. You know what they are. You know what to do to help set you up for success. And you also know what to do to help set you up for disaster or for failure. You already know it. So here's the question. Do you want this year to be better than last year? And if so, then what is your wall? What is your wall? And this is the year, believe it or not, this is the year where you stop pretending Oh, I knew it would get quiet. <laughs> but this is the year. You, you stop pretending. This, this is the year that you stop being distracted. I mean, let's be honest. Some of us are doing too many things. And they're not all bad things. But they are taking you away from the one thing that can change your life and put you in a different position come next year. Don't be distracted. Don't make excuses. See, we love to do that. And one of the excuses that we make, because we hear it all the time, is 2017 is going to be just like 2016. What's the difference? It's just another year. But it's going to be the same old stuff. Can I tell you, quit making excuses? Is it okay if I preach this morning, just share my heart with you? I, I want you to have a great year. Just quit making excuses. This is the year that you stop ignoring the issue. Because again, I believe this. I've been praying about this. I know that as I'm speaking right now, God's brought that one thing to your mind. I believe it. Don't ignore it. Don't sweep it under the rug. Don't pretend like it's not that big of a deal. What's one thing in your life that you need to change this year? What's one thing? And let me go back to it. Because I, I think we need to see this again. Is it a habit? Don't ignore it any longer. Don't make excuses. You don't have that habit because of your grandpa. Oh, come on now, somebody. I'm just like my grandpa or my papa. It just runs in my family. No, it doesn't. Jesus Christ runs in your family. He can change your life. 
He can give you a brand new start, right? Break that habit. Don't ignore it. Fight it this year. That's your one thing. Again, it could be a relationship. Maybe you just want a stronger marriage this year. What are you going to do about it? How, how, how are you going to go about that? That's your one thing. For some of you, it's finances. And this time of the year, believe me, it's big. Everybody had a great Christmas until the bills come in. And then they realize, dear God, I can't pay this. And you're stressed and you're overwhelmed. But this is the one year that you say no more. I'm not going to let my finances control me. I'm going to control my finances. And I'm going to let God work through me in my finances. I'm blessed to bless others. I'm going to get my house in order. Again, some of us, maybe it's your spiritual life. Maybe you've been feeling for a while, you've been drifting. Or you just have this hunger in your spirit. You just want to know God better. You don't want to just read about the God of the Bible. You want to know Him better. This is the year. That's your one thing. Some of you, it, it could just, I want to be a better parent. So, some of you, you just need to sit down every night with your family at dinner. That's, that's your one thing. You, you've been having all these late meetings and all these other kind of things, but you said, you know what? This year, I'm going to be there for my family. I'm going to be at my kids' games. I'm going to be at their whatever it is. I'm going to change my schedule. That's your one thing. Some of you, it may just be health. Because again, this time of the year, that's probably number one or two at the top of our resolution list, right? Right? I'm going to stop drinking Coke and I'm going to start eating better. And I'm going to start exercising and taking care of myself, right? That's how we think. So that's your one thing. That's your one thing. Because here's what I know about God. And here's what I love about God. You never know what God will do until you climb that ladder and get to work. You never know what God's going to do. But he's waiting for you to climb that ladder and to get to work. But here's what you've got to do. It all starts with this. I saved the best to last. You have to make up your mind. How many of you know there's power in a made-up mind? Change starts with making up your mind. That no more. This year is different. I'm going to overcome something. I'm, I'm going to finish something. I, I'm going to do something. I'm going to strive for something. It starts with a made-up mind. And I love what Scripture says in Proverbs 4.23. New, New Century Version says this, Be careful what you think, because your thoughts run your life. Be careful what you think. And so again, I, I, I'm going to pray this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand if you would. Worship team's going to come and, and help us here for a moment. I'm going to pray that whatever that one thing is God has put on your heart, that you're going to follow through with it this year, that, that you're going to overcome some, something this year that you've been wanting to overcome, that you're, you're going to be more than a conqueror, walk in that freedom and victory that God has for you. I'm going to pray for you. But I'm also going to pray that you make up your mind. You make up your mind. And again, let me, let me just end it with this. We're starting a week of prayer and fasting. What better way to make up your mind than to say this year, I'm going to seek God. This year, I'm going to pray like I've never prayed before. This year, I'm going to dig into God's word like I've never done before. I want to know him and I want him to help me walk in victory. I need him to give me that strength. Because I want to tell you something. If you think I'm talking about willpower today, you're wrong. You, you can will all you want for things to change. And you'll be in the same place come next year that you are right now. There's only one thing that can help you overcome those struggles and those things in your life that you want to change and be different. It is the power and the presence of God. That's what it is. And for some of us... I, I'm just going to be real with you this morning. If we can't change our schedule for three nights to seek God, 
Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. If, if we can't set some things aside to say, you know what? My life matters more than these other things. And, and my eternity matters more than these other things. God, help us. God, help us. Because I'll be coming back next year, January 1st, and you'll be in the same place that you are now. And I want to tell you and remind you, that's not God's will for you. That's not God's desire for your life. God wants you to move forward. God wants you to experience breakthrough in your life this year. God wants to set you up and put you in a different place so that you can accomplish more for him than you ever thought possible. But it starts with a made up mind. Let me pray for you. If that's your, your prayer, that's your desire, let me pray for you. We're going to spend just a, another moment here worshiping God together. Father, I thank you for your presence here today. I thank you for your word that is alive and powerful. And I thank you for speaking to our hearts today, for speaking to our spirits, for bringing things into focus for us. God, I, I do thank you that this is a year filled with new opportunities. And God, I'm so thankful that you're already in this year and you're just waiting on us. And as we draw to near to you, as we seek you, as we make up our mind, God, for things to change and to be different, for us to just experience breakthrough and victory, whatever it may be, God, we just pray that you would give us strength. We just pray that you would help us to surround ourselves with brothers and sisters who can encourage us and who can sharpen us and who can help us move forward and experience your best. God, I pray for your people. God, do more this year than we could ever ask, imagine, or think. Right now, even though it's going to take work, we thank you, Lord God, that you're going to be glorified that we're going to see things happen this year. That we're going to experience that change or that breakthrough. Because, Lord, we know that's your, your plan. That's your desire for our lives. And so, God, let us just draw near to you. Let us be strengthened and encouraged. And let us fight this good fight of faith together in Jesus' name.